Uh, it has to be a smooth function. Uh. What the fuck it is? Good morning, fellow mathematicians. This video has been requested and we are going to dive right in. It's going to be quite exciting because we are going to derive the gamma function today. Not using any arguments like uh, it has to be a smooth function. Uh, it's recursive. No, we are just going to use the Leibniz rule for integration. There was the quest for today and here we go and we are going to do it the extraordinary flammable way. So that's the way I came up with. At first I would like to introduce a simple integral. The integral going from 0 to infinity, so that's an improper one, an improper boy, of e to the minus x dx. If you integrate this you are going to end up with minus e to the minus x from 0 to infinity. The first term is going to vanish so you end up with a 1. So this thing certainly exists, that's nice. But now we want to use the Leibniz rule for integration on this one. So why not introduce a new parameter? So we are going to call a new integral i with respect to x where s is a complex number in our case. You will see why in a few minutes. And we want the real part of s to be greater than zero. So real part of s being greater than zero with s being element of the complex numbers. We need this condition right here for the integral to even converge. So the following integral is the improper one from 0 to infinity of e to the minus s times x dx. So you see I just plug this s up here in the exponent and we want to use the Leibniz rule for integration. Link in the description if you don't know what that is. So at first let's differentiate this integral first time. So i prime of s is going to be. So the upper and lower bounds are independent of this parameter s. That means we can use the special Leibniz rule for integration to just interchange the integral sign and the differential. So we need to take the partial derivative of this function right here with respect to x uh, to s. So we end up with an integral from 0 to infinity of minus x e to the minus s times x dx. So that was the first iteration. What's the next one going to be? So i double prime of s is going to be same spiel as before, special rule, Leibniz rule. So we end up with the integral from 0 to infinity of minus 1 squared, this is just 1, and x squared e to the minus s times x dx. And you can continue this process right here. And the second derivative we can denote it as that, like here. So you see we have x to the nth power if we take the nth derivative times minus 1 to the nth power times this chunk right here. So if we continue this process n times we are going to end up with the nth derivative of i with respect to x being nothing but the integral from 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the nth power x to the nth power e to the minus s times x dx. And once I reach this point, I immediately saw something extraordinary, my boys. So why not say that x is nothing but t? So let's do a substitution. And also we are going to bring this factor to the outside. So we want x to be equal to t. Nothing would really change. We will see in a second why I'm doing this. So we end up with negative 1 to the nth power times the integral going from 0 to infinity of t to the nth power e to the minus s times t dt. And <laughs> that's so fantastic because this thing right here is nothing but the Laplace transform of t to the nth power. <laughs> that's so fucking hot, my boys. Can you believe this? So we are going to derive the Laplace transform of t to the nth power now and see if we get our gamma function somehow. I hope you're excited. So this function right here, to solve this, we need a lot of black mathematic today. You can just do it recursively, so start off with the Laplace transform of t and then, and then Laplace transform of t to the second power and so on and you can see a recursive formula. But today we want to solve it um, algebraically and analytically. So let's just dive right in. So at first I would like to take a look at one of many definitions of the exponential function. So you know that sum e to the a times t is nothing but the sum, the infinity boy, from k equals to zero, or let's do it with n equals to zero to infinity of a to the nth power t to the nth power over n factorial. 
So why am I taking a look at that? Well, if we take the Laplace transform of this thing right here, so taking the Laplace transform on both sides, we are going to end up. So this side right here, the Laplace transform of e to the a times t, you can take a look into the description. There will be linked to the corresponding video. We are going to end up with 1 over s minus a. So this is just going to be the first step. We are just going to take a look at this right here at the moment. OK, but we could factor out an s right here at first. So we end up with 1 over s times 1 over 1 minus a over s. And this thing right here looks awful a lot like the geometric series. So this right here is nothing but 1 over s times the geometric series from n equals to 0 to infinity of a over s to the nth power. Now you might ask yourself, well, 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 Papa Flemmy, this thing only holds for the absolute value of a over s being less than 1. Does this even hold Papa Flemmy? Well, it does, because if you take a look, this Laplace transform right here of e to the at only holds for the real part of s being greater than a. But if you take the absolute value of a um, complex number which already has the real part of s being greater than a, then it also implies that the absolute value of s is greater than the absolute value of a. You can try it out with a, a with some complex number for yourself, it just holds. So that's something that holds, and that's quite great because we can divide both sides by the absolute value of s not being equal to zero. So that also means that one is greater than the absolute value of a over s in this case. And that's what we wanted to hold, so that's quite nice. Okay, so on the one hand, we have the Laplace transform of e to the at being just this thing right here. But on the other hand, we have this right-hand side right here. So we now know that the Laplace transform of the sum, the infinity boy, going from n equals to 0 to infinity of a to the nth power, t to the nth power, over n factorial, is now nothing but 1 over s times this chunk right here. And we can bring the 1 over s to the inside, actually. So let's do this real quick. So we end up with the infinity boy going from n equals to 0 to infinity of, and now we have a to the nth power over s to the n plus 1 power. So this is just a simple equivalence relation, and we want to play around with this expression a bit more now. We are pretty much done now, my boys. We just have to take a look at this thing right here. We are going to take something for granted now. What we are going to do now is just a matter of uniform convergence. You can check that for yourself. I'm not going to do it now because that would drag the video on forever, I guess. So you know that Laplace transform is just defined as the improper integral of something. So we now want to do, what we now want to do is to interchange this sum and this integral, you could say, without any restrictions. So dragging this sum to the front. Okay, so this is going to be the first step. So we end up with a sum going from n equals to zero to infinity of the Laplace transform of a to the nth power, t to the nth power, over n factorial. But you might know that a to the nth power and n factorial are independent of this time unit t right here, so we can drag it to the front. It's just a constant with respect to this Laplace transform. So we end up with the infinity boy from n equals to zero to infinity of a to the nth power over n factorial times Laplace transform of t to the nth power. That's amazing. So we have Laplace transform of t to the nth power. That's what we wanted to find out in the beginning. So you see, that's what we wanted to show, what it is exactly. And don't forget, we have a right-hand side. We have this equivalence relation. So, so we have this infinity boy on this side right here. And if you know a thing or two about sums, you might know if this running index right here is the same, so from n equals to 0 to infinity on both sides, then two sums are equal if their arguments right here, the things you are summing up, are equal. So what you can conclude is that we need a to the nth power over n factorial times Laplace transform of t to the nth power must be equal to a to the nth power over s to the n plus 1 power. And well, 
Hmm. The good thing is, a to the nth power is equal to zero. We don't want that, so we can cancel that out. And we can multiply both sides by n factorial, and then we are basically done. So what we can say, that Laplace transform of t to the nth power is nothing but n factorial over s to the n plus one power. But don't forget what this thing right here actually is. We have defined this before, the Laplace transform of t to the nth power is nothing but this right here, the integral going from zero to infinity of t to the nth power e to the minus st dt. And we are nearly done. We are nearly done. And if you're wondering what happened to the negative one to the nth power, well, if we have negative one to the nth power right here, we are also going to end up with negative one to the nth power right here and negative one to the nth power right here. So this is just going to cancel out. This doesn't change anything about our reasoning. Now I would just like to introduce a little substitution in this integral right here. And, and then we are done. So, so that's absolutely great. So what do we want? We want um, s to the t, uh, s times t to be equal to some x once again. That also means that s dt is nothing but dx. We can multiply both sides by 1 over s, not equal to 0. So we know that dt is nothing but 1 over s times dx. Hmm, great. But don't forget, we also have a t right here. So what is t exactly? Well, we can divide both sides by s once again. t is nothing but x over s. So we can plug all the new information in. So we now know that n factorial over s to the n plus 1 is nothing but. If we plug 0 into here, well, this is just going to be 0 once again. So x is 0. And if we plug infinity into here, well, x also goes to infinity. So this is quite nice. And now we have t to the nth power, but t is x over s, so x to the nth power over s to the nth power times e to the minus x. And dt is nothing but dx over s. But you might notice we can bring this thing right here to the outside, this 1 over s to the n plus 1. So this is 1 over s to the n plus 1 times the improper, in, improper integral going from 0 to infinity of x to the nth power e to the minus x dx. And here is the absolutely astonishing conclusion. 1 over s to the n plus 1. And this is going to cancel out. And our mind-blowing, absolutely ridiculous, amazing conclusion of this video is going to be that n factorial is nothing but the integral going from 0 to infinity of x to the nth power e to the minus x dx, which is nothing but gamma of n plus 1. And then we are done. <sighs> That was quite nice. So that was quite an awesome challenge, to be honest. I, I really enjoyed this boy right here. If you also did, please like and subscribe, recommend me if you like. If you want to support me a bit more, <laughs> link to my Patreon is in the description. And up until the next video. So this is probably a hard drive or something. Have a hard driven day, my boy. See ya.